What's up, amigos? Today we have a special request by one of your amigos, Chris Wilcox. I think that's how you pronounce your first name. Is it actually Crisp, maybe? I feel like it's probably with a P at the end, so Crisp instead of Chris. Anyway, we have a capybara with a wing on the top as if it was flying. So the airfoil on top is a NACA 2412 airfoil, which is a fairly standard airfoil. It has some camber. It's um, moderate. It's not very thin, but it's not very thick. It's somewhere in the middle. And we have a strap to this capybara. So imagine you were to simulate this on it put it in a wind tunnel to see how much lift you could generate out of it, this setup. So I have that number for you actually. So with this setup at a velocity of one meter per second, this capybara can produce 0 0.19 uh, with a lift coefficient, so 0 0.2. That's pretty decent. The drag though is <laughs> really bad. It's 0 0.89. So it it's, would just fall out of the sky pretty much. Anyway, we have different clipped X planes behind, and we see the velocity here. There are some features that I want to wait until the vorticity plots, but we'll just discuss, generally speaking, the wake here. So we have obviously the wake from the capybara. Interestingly, on top, so the wakes at the top part, you can see like this little, um, like little head coming out of the top. So even though the capybara is not, uh, the geometry is not peaking above the airfoil itself, the wake of it is still affecting the top part of the airfoil. So maybe a better situation would be to place this airfoil maybe like a foot above the capybara so that it gets into cleaner flow. It might produce more lift that way, so like a um, like an offset kind of thing. Now the wake is a little bit asymmetrical. That's because the airfoil in the capybara's rush to fly decided to put it on a little bit crooked. So there's a little bit of asymmetry there. So let's look at the vorticity now. So this is, these are the vorticity plots, the exact same planes, but now with vorticity plotted and we see a few cool things first of all this is a wing that is producing lift so you'd expect there to be wing to vortices and we do actually see that to some extent it's just that there's so much additional stuff that we need to talk about but first of all the wing to vortices you can kind of make out on the edges and they're like rotating around so you can see this airfoil is really trying hard to produce these vortices now these vortices are obviously encompassed in a whole bunch of other stuff that's coming from the capybara itself and also the effects of the capybara on the airfoil itself because now the entire suction side or not the entire pressure side sorry so the underside is not seeing clean flow in fact a lot of it is actually just strapped to the back of the capybara and then behind the capybara the pressure side is still seeing a dirty flow so the airfoil is not producing as much lift as what it should be but it's still producing winged vortices and they break down quite quickly you also get kind of like at the top where that head was that I mentioned earlier, there is again still uh, vortices coming from here as well. So for some reason, this setup just has this mystery wake at the top that's jumped over the capybara. So this is a really cool plane showing something really cool you don't see every day. First of all, you have a very um, bluff body wake kind of thing happening here where it's very unsteady. That comes from a bluff body, so something that's not streamlined. But you see that the flow is actually going down an angle as well. So that means that the airfoil is still producing lift, as we saw with the, the lift coefficient at 0 0.2. So there is a little bit of lift being produced. It's just that you have now a streamlined body that's doing its thing in proximity to the bluff body doing its thing. So you have this wake, which is the combination of these two uh, different objects. And that's where we get such a cool wake where you have this um, periodicity or this unsteadiness to the wake, but it's also going down an angle. So they're both having their effects on the wake, which is quite cool. This is another Y plane, but now it's closer to the wingtip. So it's almost completely out of the way of the capybara. There still is a little bit of its effects being felt, but that other plane that we just saw, that was right in the middle. So the capybara was right smack bang there. So now in this plane, we can see that the flow is much more well behaved. The bluff body effects are much lower and the wake uh, takes on more of a streamlined uh, body wake where it's much more much steadier and it's at a low angle of attack like it's going down because of the airfoil the airfoil is dominating this flow we can also see the flow over the airfoil is staying attached so that also indicates that the airfoil is acting much more how it should be compared to the last plane we saw so now we have a lower z plane so this z plane is going through the capybara pretty much there's none of the z plane actually impacting the airfoil but if we look at the wake, the wake is significantly wider just downstream of the entire ensemble here than just the capybara itself. Why is that? That's because of the wake from the airfoil is actually impacting this plane as well. 
because the airfoil is at an angle of attack that's pitching the flow down, um, this flow is actually what we're seeing here. So that's why it's so wide. It's actually, if you look closely, it's the same span as the airfoil span as well. So that's why we get this situation here. So now this is also a really indicative uh, plane of this situation here of the airfoil pitching lift. So we have the vorticity shown here. And if you look at the purple bit around the entire um, object here, at the very start, there is a very high um, vorticity and then it starts to die out a little bit. Then at the trailing edge of the airfoil, so if you just look downstream from there, the vorticity gets stronger again. Why is that? That's the vorticity coming from the airfoil itself, the wingtip vortices. As I mentioned, they're going down at an angle. So this plane here, we're seeing some of that creep into this um, vorticity plot. That's why we get that local high again. So the airfoil is indeed producing those vortices as we expected and we saw in the X-plane uh, videos. So now we have another Z plane, but it's slightly higher. So it's just at the bottom of the airfoil's trailing edge effectively. So all that wake that's coming from the airfoil going down, this is the very first part that we'll see. And it's a little bit unsteady. That's because of the flow over the top was a little bit unsteady because there was some separation from the capybara. But also underneath, we have the capybara's wake as well, impacting this wake as well. That's why we don't get as smooth a flow coming off as we'd expect from just a regular airfoil. But that's what we need to deal with if we want to make this capybara fly. So. That's this, this simulation. Make sure to like, subscribe. And if you have any other rodents that you want to see how to make them fly, let me know. <laughs> Otherwise, I'll see you in the next simulation. Peace out, amigos.